Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on how to use Excel's Solver tool to perform non-linear interpolation. And a good example of when we would want to do this is to construct the yield curve. Specifically in this case, let's con construct the U.S. Treasury yield. It's oftentimes a proxy for a default or riskless yield curve. And so if we look at the yellow shaded region, I went directly to the government website, the U.S. Treasury website, and pulled the yields for different maturities. So for example, here is the most recent on-the-run yield for a one-year Treasury bill. It's 2.05%. I have a two-year yield, a three-year yield, a five, a seven, and a ten. And you can see one of the realities is that we only have yields for certain maturities. I don't have a four year, I don't have a six, I don't have an eight or nine. So let's say I wanted to construct that yield curve. One thing I could do certainly is just do linear interpolation. But let's say I actually want to apply a nonlinear function. And if I go up here and we look at this function here, I'm not going to get into the details of this function. This is a very common and as functions go simple to describe the term structure. This is the Nelson and Seigel model and it allows us to specify the term structure as a function of only four parameters. We can see we've got alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, beta, and then t here is the maturity. So that's in light blue. And so over to the left, I've got alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and beta. So those are the key parameters for the Nelson and Seigel model that will allow me to specify a term structure and, and the nice thing is this will be nonlinear. And so I just plugged in here some values. They don't mean anything. I made these up. And we can look here over on the chart. You can see we get the, something that is nonlinear here. This would happen to be a uh, inverted term structure. So I could go up here to alpha 2 and input negative 0.02 because al alpha 2 uh, speaks to the slope of the function. So if as soon as I put in a negative 2 here, you can see I have get a different yield curve. And this, this yield curve actually doesn't look too bad, except in red or orange, I've plotted at the actual treasury yields just from last week. And so you can see these are just points because these are the only points that I've got. And so you can see there is an implied term structure of treasury yields here. It looks nothing like the one that I guessed. So all I want to do now is remember the red are the actual data points. And now I'd like to fit the blue line, which is described by this equation. I would just like to fit it so that it gives me a best fit of the actual line. And then that, by doing that, I will really be performing a sort of non-linear interpolation. How would I do that? Well, one way to do that is just by minimizing the squared residual. So if I come over here to the left, again, in this first column, I've got actual treasury yields. In the second column, here in light blue, I've got the output that solves for the Y or the yield at different maturities given by the Nelson and Seigel model. So again, this, these, blue, these blue data points describe this line that is currently plotted. And so it is determined by alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and beta, the four parameters that I arbitrarily plugged in and it's not a good fit. Well, one thing we can do is simply for each compare each actual observation to the predicted yield. That's form function right here. Equal, see we've got D14 minus C14, so that's predicted minus the actual treasury yield. That's the difference and we could square it. So this is really an ordinary least squared approach. For each point I square the difference between my predicted and the actual, and then I sum them at the bottom. And then I'm going to carry that summation up here to the top just so it's convenient. But right now I've got a value in there. Let me just clarify what this says. This is the sum of the squared residuals. And so the closer my function 
is to the actual points, the smaller these differences will be and the smaller the squared residuals will be. And so really what I have is an optimi optimization problem that is perfect for solver. Because what I would like to do is using this Nelson and Seigel model, I would like to solve for the four parameters that give me a function that minimize the sum of the squared residuals. And so now we can see really we're just minimizing for this sum of squared residuals by altering these four cells. So if I go up to data and click solver, I get set the target cell and the target cell is this right here. That's the sum of squared residuals and I want to minimize it so I select minimize and then here's the key by changing which cells and this is what's great about solver it will simultaneously optimize for f all four of my inputs and so that's all I need to tell it if I click solve solver takes maybe a second and it tells me it's done I hit OK to keep the solver solution and look at that the actual line or the the function produced by solver is a very good fit and you can see it even it even incorporates that dip at two years but this gives me a nonlinear interpolation and so what it did is it changed alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha and the beta and then here is the predicted values so I did in fact get to interpolate between the observed treasury yields and so you can see how really powerful and easy to use the solver is given in Excel. So that's David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I hope this was helpful and thanks for your time.